Hello and welcome back to the second video on the Juno's user interface. In the first video, we looked at topics such as um, out of band versus inline connection. We looked at logging in as a root user versus logging in as a non root user. We also looked at some command line uh, shortcut sequences and uh, some help commands. In this video, we're going to look at six different topics. We'll understand what are the commands to filter the output given by the device. We'll understand the different levels of output. We'll understand the differences between active configuration versus candidate configuration. We'll also talk about the different configuration modes, the configuration hierarchy, and finally we'll also discuss some navigation commands. So that's the plan for this video. Let's begin. The first topic is filtering output, so let's dive straight into the device. I'm already logged into the device, so let's look at this command to look at the output. We already saw this command when we were discussing the uh, differences between inline and out of band connection. So let's look at this command show system services. That's the normal output of this command. Now, if we wanted to filter some of the output, what we could do is we could use a pipe um, symbol here, and then we can do a question mark, and we have a number of different ways in which we can filter the output. The first one that I want to show you is the compare command. So you can do a compare. And you can compare the output of this command maybe with a configuration file that you've already saved or you can also compare it with a rollback. So just in case if I had a rollback, I could compare it. But right now I do not have a rollback so it does not give me an output. Okay. You could also compare it with a file. So you can just hit a question mark and it will tell you that you need to enter the name of the file. Okay, so that's one way of comparing your output with a previous configuration file or a previous rollback. Additionally, you can also do um, count, so it will show you the number of lines of output. Let's try that. So it says the output has 21 lines. You could also uh, use the display option here to view the set commands that were used to configure the settings. So let's take a look at the output without any filters. As you can see here, it appears like a programming language here and then it has some uh, curly braces over here. So it appears more or less like a programming language. It does not show you the actual command that was used to set these values. So if you wanted to look at the actual command that was used, the set command that was used, so you can say show system services, use a pipe and then you can say display set this command will show you all the set commands that were used to configure these settings. So that's one way of filtering your output. Let's look at some more. So we also have the find option. So when you use the find option and you specify a keyword or a word inside the output that you're looking for, if the word that you're specifying is found uh, in the output, then the output actually begins from that point only. So anything that's above that word that you specified will be cut off. So let's take a look at that without um, any filters, show system services, right? So look at this, you have one, two, and three lines before the keyword or before the word web management. So let's take a look at it, show system services. And if I did find web management, I'm just typing it as it is over here, find web management then the output would begin from this point. It would actually remove all these um, extra stuff above that. Yeah, so as you can see here, everything that's above that gets removed. The output actually starts from the word that you specified. The other option that we can look at is, the other interesting option is the last keyword. So let's say you just wanted to take a look at the last five lines of the output. So you can use the last keyword here and say last five. So that will show you the last five lines of the output only. As you can see that here, it only displays the last five lines of the output. This command also comes in very handy when you're looking at uh, output that goes into several pages. The other one that I wanted to show you is the match command. So you can say match. And if you did match, let's say Telnet, you can see that here, it just tells you if your word is actually found in the output or not. So it is, so it shows you the word there. There's also a keyword called as no more. Now this is used when you do not want your output to be displayed in pages. So I can show you an example. Let's just do a show. The show command is used to look at the entire configuration. So I'm just gonna say show. 
And as you can see here, the output actually stops here. It stops with a more, which means you need to hit a spacebar to look at the second page. And then it again uh, stops at a more. Now if you do not want this to happen, that is if you do not want it to paginate, what you can do is you can say show and then you can use the no more keyword and then it will show you the entire output without you having to press the spacebar. Okay, so that's the use of the no more keyword. Let's look at one more keyword, show system services, pipe. And uh, let's look at save. So if you wanted to save your output to um, a file maybe, so you can say uh, save and then you can say output.txt and that will save your, or you can just say output, and that will save the output of this command to this file called as output. So those are the commands to filter your output. Let's now look at some output levels. So I'll go back to the device. And for this, I'm going to log out and enter the operational mode. And let me clear the screen for a second. So I'm going to use the command show interfaces. Show interfaces FE000.0. Um, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now there's four different output levels in Junos. The first one is terse. If I said show interfaces FE000 0, 0, 0, terse, that's just going to give me very, um, that's just going to give me the most minimal information as possible. So it just gives you the name of the interface, um, the administrative status, and the protocol status, and that's it. The terse keyword is very useful when you want to take a look at all your interfaces. So you can say show interfaces and it gives you complete information about all your interfaces okay which one is up which one is down what's the IP address and that kind of stuff okay so the first uh, keyword to display the output is TERS I'll show that to you one more time show interfaces FE000 TERS the next one is show interfaces in fact I'm just gonna hit the up arrow and remove the TERS keyword and the other keyword is brief this one here, brief. Okay, so we can say brief. That gives you some more information. It gives you information like what's the logical interface, gives you some flag information, what is the zone, and what's the traffic that's allowed on the interface. Okay, that's the brief keyword. You also have something called as detail. You can see that here. So we'll try that as well. This one gives you even more information like some statistics that may be helpful in troubleshooting. Yeah, so it shows you information such as how many bytes and how many packets went in and came out and stuff like that. So some additional information compared to the brief option. The last option uh, when you're looking at an output is is extensive. So you can say show interfaces FE000 extensive. And this command is going to give you all possible information. So hit enter and it just gives you lots and lots and lots of information. So four different ways to look at the output. Show interfaces question mark. First one is terse. The second one is brief. The third one is detail. And the last one is extensive. So that's the different levels of output. Let's now talk a little bit about active configuration versus candidate configuration. So what is the active configuration? The active configuration is the one that is currently saved on your device. It is also the configuration that is used to boot up when you power on the device. What is the candidate configuration? Now when you enter the configuration mode using the configure command or the edit command, the device copies the active configuration into a temporary configuration known as the candidate configuration. So at any point of time you are never directly editing the active configuration. You are only editing a copy of the active configuration which is known as the candidate configuration. Once you hit the commit command or once you save your changes the candidate configuration gets copied and that becomes the active configuration. So that's the difference between active configuration and candidate configuration. Active is what's saved on your device and it is also the one that the device uses when it boots up. When you try to make any changes by entering the configuration mode, a copy of the active configuration is created, which is called as the candidate configuration. When you save your changes, the candidate configuration is now saved as the most recent active configuration. Alright, so let's now talk about the different configuration modes. 
there's three different configuration modes. The first one is shared configuration mode. The second one is private configuration mode. And the third one is exclusive configuration mode. Now, when you enter the configuration mode with the command edit, or when you enter the configuration mode with the command configure, you are actually entering the shared configuration mode, which means along with you, there could be other users who may be editing the configuration as well. If you commit your changes, that means you will be committing the changes made by everybody else as well, because you are in a shared configuration mode. The other option is configure private. This takes you into the private configuration mode. Private configuration mode allows multiple users to be logged in into their private configuration mode. When you issue the commit command, you're only saving the changes made by you. You're not saving the changes made by other users. So configure private is a private configuration mode, but it does allow other users to be in the configuration mode as well in their own private space. The last option is configure exclusive. When you enter the exclusive configuration mode, you are the only one who is authorized to make changes. Once you enter the exclusive configuration mode, nobody else, no other user will be able to enter the configuration mode. And remember, when you enter the configuration mode as exclusive or private, if you exit the configuration mode, your changes will be discarded. That means if you forget to save your uh, configuration changes when you exit out, the changes will be discarded. Okay, so three different modes. The first one is shared configuration mode, which allows multiple users to be inside the configuration mode and save the changes. The next one is private configuration mode, which allows multiple users to be inside their own private configurations. But when you commit, you're only committing your changes and nobody else's changes. The last one is the exclusive configuration mode, which allows only one person to edit the configuration at any time. So that's about the configuration modes. Let's take a look at the Juno's configuration hierarchy. If you're new to Juno's, you may have already noticed the way configuration works in Juno's is slightly different when you compare it with other firewalls or other devices. For example, let's say I wanted to edit the system services. Let's take a look at what's already in there. So I'll say show system services. Web management is currently set to interface VLAN 0 for both HTTP and HTTPS. Let's say I wanted to add interface FE000 to the HTTP web management. Now there's multiple ways in which I could do this. The first method is to say set system services and then this one here, this is the hierarchy, web management and this is the second hierarchy, HTTP and then I can say interface and I can say FE000.0 and this will actually work. So the command will work absolutely fine. So this is one way of doing it, writing the entire command. The other way of doing this is to enter the specific configuration hierarchy. So I can say edit system services web management HTTP. Okay, so I'm all the way up to here now. And I can say enter and now my configuration hierarchy changes from the top level edit to edit system services web management HTTP. And now I can just say set interface FE000.0. And this will also work. So two different ways to do the same thing. You either write the entire command like this, set system services, web management, HTTP interface FE000. Or you enter the specific configuration hierarchy, edit system services, web management, HTTP, and then you say set interface FE000. The same applies for all kinds of configuration. For example, let's say I wanted to configure a security policy. So I could say set security policy from zone trust to zone untrust. And I can say policy, name of the policy is allow all. Yeah, and then I can say match source address, etc., etc., etc. So I can complete the command this way. That's one way of doing this. Or I could also do edit security policies from zone trust to zone untrust policy. And then I define the name of the policy. So I can say allow all. And now it takes me to the specific configuration hierarchy. I'm now into the configuration hierarchy for this specific policy. Now directly I can say set source address 
we're set to match source address and I can say 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and that works so I can actually write the whole command or I can enter the specific configuration hierarchy and reduce the length of my commands so two different ways to do this now if you're new to Junos you might find this a little bit confusing when I started learning Junos I found it hard in the beginning because this was not the way I was used to configuring a firewall device so we understood the configuration hierarchy as well and finally let's discuss a few navigation commands so right now I am under edit security policies from zone trust to zone untrust policy allow all if I wanted to move one level up so let's say I wanted to move from um, the policy configuration hierarchy to this hierarchy edit security policies from zone trust to zone untrust if I wanted to move here what I could do is I could say up and that would move me one level up okay so it says um, the then statement is missing because the policy is not completely configured so that's fine but even then it has moved us one level up so from the policy configuration hierarchy we've now moved to the security policies hierarchy now if I wanted to move two levels up so let's say um, let's let's go back one more time to the same hierarchy edit policy okay so we are back to the same hierarchy let's say I wanted to move two levels up okay so I can do up and then hit a space and give a numerical value for the number of times I want to go up so I can say up to and then that would take me directly to edit security policies so if we did it one time it took me here if I did an up to it took me all the way up to edit security policies so that's how you can move up in the configuration hierarchy if you wanted to move directly to the top of the configuration hierarchy you can use the top command and that would take you directly to the edit which is the topmost configuration hierarchy let me also show you one more so let's say edit system services web management let's say I wanted to completely come out of configuration mode and go directly to the operational mode then I can say exit configuration mode yeah so it exits completely and it takes me directly to the operational mode okay so four different ways to navigate the configuration hierarchy the first one is the up command you can also use up with a numerical value you can do a top command to move to the top of the configuration hierarchy and you can also do exit configuration mode to exit and directly move to the operational mode okay so we discussed navigation commands as well so lots of interesting things that we discuss in this video starting with filtering output different output levels differences between active and candidate configuration the configuration modes how to move into specific configuration hierarchies and finally we also saw some navigation commands in the next video we're going to continue to focus on the Junos user interface we'll take a look at the Junos commit model commit model and we also talk about the rollback model of Junos so that's the plan for the next video I'm really excited to see you there I'd like to thank you for watching